You're welcome to the Policy Council. My name is Okwaemi Agbaje. Today we look at financing development in Lagos State. There's a lot of infrastructure that we see springing up all over the state. Roads and street lights and all sorts of projects, schools, renovations. And it's a puzzle. How is Lagos State financing all of this? How much is the internal revenue that is generated? How are the taxes contributing to infrastructure? What are the borrowings? Is the state's debt sustainable? These and other questions will be answered by my guest, the Commissioner for Finance in the state. Enjoy the program. You're welcome back. It's the Policy Council. My name is Okwemi Agbaje, and my guest is the Honorable Commissioner for Finance in Lagos State. He's an economist, he's a chartered accountant, and he was my colleague in banking. I did Tokumbo Abi. Tokumbo, you're welcome to Thank you very much, the Okwemi. Policy Council. Thank you very much, Okwemi. Okay, let's, let's, um, we're talking financing development in Lagos State, and obviously that is your de job definition. What, what correct, was the... Correct. What's the job definition of the Commissioner for Finance? Well, to put it just rightly, um, is to um, provide the necessary financing backing okay. for all government-related activities, um, of course, inclusive of financing, mm -hmm. of development, and also recurrent expenditure. And okay. All that. So you, you made a short reference to recurrent expenditure. Yeah. And we know that at the federal level, we have this... Mm -hmm. 75% the current 20, well now 30%, 70% the current and capital. Lagos State is not like that. What I can say is that um, there is a sense of physical discipline here. Mm -hmm. And, um, in the, and um, you, you can take a cue from how the budget itself is structured. Mm -hmm. One, um, our budget is largely skewed towards capital, capital expenditure. expenditure. Rightly so, because of the need to fix physical and infrastructure. critical infrastructure in the state. Mm -hmm. Then, importantly, um, the discipline even derives from the fact that, uh, as a rule, and um, over the, I mean, uh, for the past uh, few years of this administration, what has been done is to maintain a recurrent surplus mm. on a yearly basis okay. that is now available to for also capital for capital expenditure. expenditure spending. The other component, of course, of your, and the more controversial component of your financing strategy has been the bonds and debts. And several people have raised questions about, about Lagos State's debts. What, what would you have to say to that? On that? Okay, well, um, number one, let me say that there is nothing wrong in borrowing. Yes. Now, but again, the sense of the borrowing too is very important. Now, um, part of what physical responsibility tells you to do is that, look, it is when you incur a recurrent surplus, that is when you can you can contract borrowing for to borrowing. complement for critical infrastructure. Because that recurrent surplus demonstrates that you have capacity to exactly. repay. To repay and also you also have a cushion yes. to even complement what you are borrowing. There is a, a bond Correct. and 80 billion naira. Correct. So yeah. what, what, what were you planning to do with that 80 billion? Well, what this administration had done way back 2008, I mean when it came in, was to actually look at the needs as to how will the infrastructural gap be financed. Mm. So what they had done, what the government had done was to put in, in place a 275 billion bond issuance. Now, what has happened is that um, in 2009, the first tranche was done, which was the 50 billion. Yeah. And of course, taking a cue from the way our physical um, structure is, um, um, is, is, um, is done, of course, most of the process of that um, um, capital that raise initial exactly went into um, uh, infrastructure. infrastructure. Then, of course, in 2010, again, another one was done, which was for um, about 57.5 billion, you understand? And, of course, so today, we, we have done about 107. Now, um, the shelf life of a typical bond program is two years. Now, of course, you'll agree if, if, um, if, the, if the shelf, I mean, the shelf was registered in 2008, sorry, 2009, by 2011, it will have expired. Yeah. So what has happened is that the unissued portion is what we have re registered. So nothing new has nothing happened, really, in terms of the 
size of the bond program. Yeah. So it is the unissued portion now of 167 that we have just registered of which this 80 billion is the first tranche okay. out of it. Yeah. But let me also add that even the bond itself, it is good for, for people to understand mm. that it is properly structured mm. in terms of its repayment. Yeah. There is a sinking fund that is backed by law mm. that will, I mean, which will give reassurance as to repayment investors. capacity. Yeah. And I'm happy to say that as we speak here today, in the sinking fund, we have in excess of 60 billion that has been approved. Wow. Right? From our projections, we, also, we, we reckon that the first bond will be due for retirement in 20, 2014. Mm early 2014, if today we have over 60, 60 billion, billion. Over 60 billion. And the first bond was 50, 50 million, billion. billion. Exactly. Exactly. So in, in effect, you've paid off. Exactly. Now, now again, it's also important to also look at the advantage which the bond, which, which this program has presented. Hmm. One, it has, been, it has enabled us to I mean, address some critical infrastructure. Now, in terms of pricing, we all know the kind of environment we're operating, high interest rate environment. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that this, the earlier bonds were issued at the price of 13% and 10%. Today, if you go to the money market to raise such monies, mm. I mean, you'll be talking about 17, 18. 18. So there's a lot of savings. Mm. There's a lot of savings and yeah. value, of course, will derive from that. Yeah. So, um, so for us, now going into this arrangement as well, we have also work, worked out the numbers. And our projection is that if we take on this 80 billion, we also project that by the time this present government will be leaving office, we will have retired the first bond program, and from, uh, from the sinking fund again, we will have accrued close to about 100 billion in the sinking fund, and we will be carrying a, an expo I mean, liability of about 137 billion that will be left. But again, we, we shouldn't be unmindful of the value that the entire bond program will have created in terms of, in terms of expansion, of exactly, in terms economic of expansion, exactly, exactly, and all of that. exactly. Hmm, sounds like a sensible case. Hmm. Let's take this time out and we'll be back with Mr. Tokumbo Abiru, Lagos State Commissioner for Finance. I'll be right back. My name is Alaide Awoyemi. I did live for Lagos. You see as our new Lagos just defined the good. Good thing good though, to go market now. No hard at all. Just pay. Sit down inside be out to go. Small time, you don't reach where they go. Hospital call, the full ground. And for me and my picking where I just born, treatment now. Free. You look left, you look right. Then they build new roads, new hospitals, new schools, new new things everywhere. Everywhere they shine, gone. We thank God do. But come on. I hear saying that this tax money will they pay. I think then they used to do all these good good things. Me I they pay my own tax. Say they pay on your own. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You're welcome back. It's still the Policy Council, and I still have Mr. Deto Kumbo Abiru, Honorable Commissioner for Finance in Lagos State. And we're talking about Lagos State and financing development and operations of the government. Um, talking about one of the ongoing issues that are, is even in the newspapers. Yeah. We saw your, your governor, His Excellency, Mr. Fashola, at the National Assembly, and evidently there's some desire to, 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 to benefit from some World Bank loan facility, which the Federal Minister of Finance appears to be stalling, and the governor <laughs> was making the case directly to the House of Representatives. What was yeah. this all about? Well, what, what has happened is that um, because of the, um, the way if the World Bank has seen the momentum hmm. of, the, of, the, uh, of the present administration in Lagos in trying to fix um, a critical infrastructure, the, the World Bank approached the state, as a matter of fact, in 2009 and actually um, advised that based on what they, are, what they have seen in terms of development and the sincerity with which this present government is tackling people issues and all that. They reckoned that um, what would be required in terms of support will not be the typical uh, project project guide, guide facilities. Yeah, because they saw sincerity and transparency. Mm. And what it came up with was that it would be better to actually you know, finance government-owned programs that mm. they are, the government has had, had, um, identified. 
Now, um, having done that, what they came up with was what is called the Development Policy Operation Support Facility, which is the uh, World Bank facility that is in question now. And now what that policy does, these, these are experiment, experiments that have been carried out in other large federal states like um, Brazil, mm. India, and Pakistan. Mm. It, it, for, to the World Bank, it had worked for them there, yeah. and they see no reason why it can't work here. Based on the, I mean, they came up with, I mean, they advised that there will be need for some of the, to complement some of the reforms that were going on. Some of the reforms will include physical discipline, I mentioned mm -hmm. the other time, which they had seen and they believe in. They also um, reckon that we should put in the um, audit law, which mm -hmm. of course we have, you know, put in place, the procurement law, mm -hmm. the public financial management law, mm -hmm. haven't satisfied all these conditions. Mm -hmm. Now, and what that loan specifically um, um, uh, pinpoint is the fact that it will be a yearly um, $200 million consecutive arrangement for three years. Mm. Now, I haven't satisfied the rule, I mean, the, all the conditions. The first tranche of that loan was actually given mm. advance to the state last year. Now, it, um, now the gain, the way um, external borrowers are contracted in Nigeria, and with the World Bank, is that the loans are given, of course, to the federal government, then there will be a subsidiary agreement between the state and the... So technically, what it means is that for, end, for you to qualify, for the loan to be processed, you need to also, I mean, um, prioritize it in your national borrowing plan. Okay. Now, if there is an arrangement that a donor has sent and believes that will support your budget operations. And it, I mean, the donor is saying, look, it, the way to do it is a three-year consecutive. It's like um, going to your doctor and the doctor says, you, I, mean, you, I mean, the doctor believes you have malaria mm. and he prescribes a that three, you have uh, a three course three. dosage. And you administer one and somebody says withdraw the two. I mean, unless you want the, the, the patient, patient to pack aside. To exactly. Or, so what has happened technically is that having gotten the first, the first one, one you know, the second, the, the, um, the, the remaining two tranches need to be also accommodated, accommodated in the federal the borrowing, borrowing plan. plan. And again, the borrowing plan is a medium term. It covers 2012 to 2014. Mm. Now, the question, the, our, the question is, if you don't put it there in the borrowing plan, that means within the period 2012 to 2014, there yeah. will be no way to access, so access. this window. So and the federal, I, I, I heard the governor say at the National Assembly, that the Minister of Finances, she cannot accommodate Lagos now. That might be our position. Mm. But we will also imagine that if you have a, a policy support arrangement here, you know, that is, I mean, which is more or less endorsing a subnational. It's a subnational for your, doing well. Exactly. For providing well. infrastructure. From, you know, I mean, I, I mean, how do we explain why um, somebody will say that um, I will not accommodate? I think the real point to look at is that, you see, in the arrangement, what typically happens is that a World Bank gives you a country ceiling. Mm -hmm. And what you would ordinary, ordinarily expect, that the first set of projects that you will put in are projects that are already running, running. On their, I mean, running a course, mm -hmm. rather than terminate it. I mean, well, the, I mean, that might be the position of the minister, but the, to the extent that... It doesn't that, seem to make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to us, I mean, as, as well. Mm. Okay, let's take a time out. We'll be right back with Mr. Adeto Kumbuabiru, Commissioner for Finance, Lagos State. You're welcome back. I still have Tokumbo Abiru, Lagos State Commissioner for Finance with me. Tokumbo, what, what, what's the way out? What's your last word on this World Bank Federal Minister of Finance issue? Okay, thank you. Number one, um, I think I should make it very clear. This is um, a facility that we, um, we have gotten on merit, mm -hmm. we have gotten on merit, and, um, and, it, and given the structure of the facility itself, it's a 40-year facility with, um, um, with a moratorium of 10 years mm. on principal repayment, and the, um, the pricing is almost below 1%. I mean, so it's almost the grant. Exactly. So, I mean, I don't know what other kind of facility you can contract to finance development mm -hmm. other than 
this kind of budget support arrangement. Mm -hmm. Now, so the only way out is, I mean, we're, we are taking the last option. We have uh, made a formal appeal to the National Assembly, and we, all, we believe very strongly that the only way out is inclusion in the borrowing plan okay. so that we can contract it. But again, I think um, just as a summary, I think the, um, the contracting the loan shouldn't be looked at in isolation. Mm. It is part of the complement of our strategy, financing strategy for the state, in the sense that um, because of the um, huge capital that is required um, in fixing you know, major infrastructure here, and it is not, I mean, it's not, um, if you also look at the way we put together our revenues, revenues are largely from taxes and mm. all that, and they trickle in, mm. you understand? So um, what we have done, the strategy, ensure that our IGR, our internally generated revenue, which accounts for over 70% of our yearly revenue, continues to grow. Mm -hmm. Then also put in place, I mean, continue to ride on our fiscal discipline mm -hmm. in ensuring that we maintain, I mean, we cover our recurrence us. largely from our revenues. Then of course, um, now putting, I mean, con I mean complementing with the bond program, mm -hmm. external borrowings mm -hmm. like the World Bank DPO, that is largely the, um, the major borrowings that we have right now. Mm -hmm. And given the structure of that borrowings, I'm not, I don't think there is any other arrangement that can complement our... What, what's your debt sustainability performance okay. right now? Um, if I use the um, World Bank IMF um, country uh, policy and um, um, institutional assessment indices, mm -hmm. number one, um, in terms of solvency, our debt to GDP as a, as a state is below, is under 5%. Hmm. The, um, benchmark the benchmark for, is for environment like this is about 40%. 40. It's about 40%. So we are about 5%. In terms of debt service hmm. to our revenue is below 15%. The recommendation is about 30%. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of, um, if you also go by the Fiscal Responsibility Act as well, it prescribes that one, for you to contract debt, you must have physical revenue I mean, I mean, recurrent surplus. Number one, that you is forty percent exactly, surplus. and of course, your yearly deficit financing should not be more than three percent of your GDP. We are at one, below one point five percent. So, in terms of the ratios, our debt is very, debt very, 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 very strong. Let's, let's talk very quickly about taxes. Negotiators say you charge too many taxes well, and land charges and, and all uh, of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, our inland revenue service has been reorganized. And um, also, several reforms are ongoing mm. way back 1999. Mm. Uh, part of what the reforms has done is to reduce all areas of leakages mm -hmm. and also improve on the process of collect assessment and collection. Now, there is no taxpayer today that pays directly to any, I mean, to any, I mean, to um, government agents. They pay through the banking system. Yeah. So that reduces leakages. Leakage. Yeah. Now, what we have also done is to consolidate all the various charges, I mean, taxes, um, the neighborhood improvement mm -hmm. charges, tenement rate, and uh, ground rent. We have consolidated everything under one wow. tax rule, which is the um, land use charge. That is on the land use charge. And if I go further in terms of the um, um, taxation, I, I don't believe that we have too many taxes here. Um, but one thing I believe is that, um, and what our numbers are showing, is that from a population of over 20 million people, mm. our, our, our own estimation shows that the uh, taxable group or taxable number of people here should be about 8 million. What we have is just under 30%, which, I mean, under 15%, which is about 3 million. Now, what we need to do, which we are doing by way of... Um, advocacy, enlightenment, and education is to continue to find ways of increasing the, widening or widening the tax net. So that the few of us who pay will not be <laughs> exactly <laughs> overwhelmed. And okay. I, but I'm, I'm also sure that you can see the, connect the connection between as, as in to development exactly. and our tax. Exactly. exactly. Let's take this final time out and then I'll be back for the final segment with Mr. Ade Tokumbo Abibu, Lagos State Commissioner for Finance. An economist, a banker, my former colleague at Gantry Trust Bank, <laughs> and my friend. We'll be right back. Who knows Abi better thing? Abi who knows like better thing? Ha. Hmm. 
All these fine fine things where they see so. Now money go make the thing do and now. Habi, I think it's like you know. I mean, excuse me, I did pay my tax. I did do a thing. I did pay my tax. Say you don't pay your own tax. If you pay your tax, I pay. Oh. Pay your tax. It's your civic responsibility. It's your duty. It's the law. You're welcome back to the final segment of the Policy Council. My name is Okwemi Agbaje, and my guest is Adeto Kubo Abiru, Commissioner for Finance in Lagos State. Thank you. Uh, talks. Let's end this with um, 2012 budget performance. Right. Um, you had a budget over 400 billion, if I recall. Yeah. This year's proposal is still a proposal. Yeah. It's also well over 400 billion. Mm -hmm. How has the budget performed in 2012? Well. Um, <clears throat> The 2012 budget has um, um, fared very well in, my, in, in our reading, mm. and um, there's a budget with a size of about 490 billion plus. Mm. The first quarter, um, we did about 65% of it. By the second quarter, it, was, um, it improved to about 75% in terms of the overall. And of course, um, because of some of the delays that um, we experienced largely from our bond program and all that to um, the third quarter to slow down a bit to about 65% um, as well. Now, having successfully completed the bond program and also with the improvement in our uh, internally gener gener generated yeah. revenue, we see a very good performance towards the end of December um, 31st. We, uh, look, uh, we, we Our estimate will show nothing less than 80% um, overall performance. performance. Since, I mean, an, I mean budgets are essentially estimates. Yeah. What I what we can adduce to some of the reasons for the mind I mean for the um, um, shortfall will I mean will largely arise from our expectations. Not that we rely on it. I mean I'm sure we're all aware of the challenges with the federal receipts as well. Mm -hmm. That's federal revenues in terms of oil theft and all that mm -hmm. utilization. They've slowed down um, some of the um, no, I mean, some of the projections mm -hmm. that we had. But I must also say that this is not, this is not a state that relies on federal receipts. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's our own share of the national mm -hmm. wealth. Mm -hmm. We must recognize it. Mm -hmm. Because in terms of funding, of, I mean, in terms of our revenue, our internally generated revenue accounts for over 75% of our total revenues. Mm -hmm. So on that, we are largely on course with our And Lagos revenue. State is Nigeria's largest non-oil economy. Exactly. By far. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, um, the takeaway from the budget, too, will be seen by um, uh, um, improvement in critical infrastructure. infrastructure. And um, roads, quite frankly, yeah. there are quite a lot of road mm -hmm. projects. Road, I, mean. I mean, I can tell you about roads, and particularly if you look along the um, Lagos-Badagri corridor, mm -hmm. um, the project that is ongoing there, if you, all re if you recall, that is a road that was built way back 1977. Mm. It hasn't seen any improvement since 1977. So mm. what you are seeing today is an upgrade of the and reconstruction of the road from a four-lane road to a ten-lane um, 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 access way mm. with a light rail sure. um, inset. Mm. And now, um, and what we are the old the old idea is also to change the um, the um, the concept of that corridor from mm. a domestic thinking to a more economically viable corridor. If you, you, I'm sure you know that that extends to neighboring to countries. Neighboring so countries. It, we expect that those are the areas where we're going to see and you real build this growth. fantastic bridge in my neighborhood. Oh yes, it's also uh, to decongest your corridor as well. <laughs> <if I remember. laughs> because we also see a lot of growth along that corridor and that should also complement the Lake, Lekki Express Road Express, um, so. corridor as well. Hmm. Tokumbo, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Okwe. It's a pleasure. It's thank been you. a nice time. Thank you. We'll be right back. The message from my guest today has been that Lagos State is fiscally responsible. It has a recurrent surplus. It has overwhelming debt sustainability, given all global indices, and that there's a connection between the taxes we pay and the infrastructure, the, the development, and the smooth operations of the state government. Perhaps it has sufficient justification for those assertions. The Lagos state government has this issue with the Federal Minister of Finance in terms of 
accessing World Bank provided loans, which have been provided to the state based on its excellent record of budget and economic management. We hope this impasse will be resolved in the interest of development and in the interest of our economy. Thank you for watching. See you next time.